Hey, I just picked up the new Titanium Flux 125 welder from Harbor Freight. They just barely came out with it, and I'm excited to see if they've upped their game when it comes to these cheap flux core welders. Also, be sure to stick around till the end of the video because I'm gonna show you the four things that you need to know to successfully learn to weld today. I get weekly coupons from Harbor Freight, and even though they're usually the same thing, I still look inside to see uh, what they've got, and I saw this, and it's like, whoa, that looks pretty cool. Um, I've used their old flux core welder, and uh, it was tough. It was AC and difficult to use. So I was excited to see they have one that runs on DC with an inverter uh, that seemed to be a pretty good unit. Um, costs a little bit more, but still uh, within the entry level range. I think I paid $169 with a coupon, $199 regular. Um, so, so we've got a manual, some extra, extra contact tip, and some not a nozzles, packaging, and here it is. Right there. Nice little guy. Um, the gun itself, it, you know, seems okay, adequate to do the job. Nothing fancy. And pull this out of here. See if we can't set it up. Okay, so here I am putting the wire in. You've got to feed it past the uh, drive roll and put the tension on there. You can adjust the tension right there. Uh, there's also a great feature. It's got a cold uh, wire feed there with that button I was pressing that will feed the wire along. So um, before you feed a bunch of wire out, you need to take the contact tip off because the wire will never make it through the tiny little hole in there. And then uh, stretch the cable out so that uh, it's easier for the wire to go uh, go through. So I like to straighten it out like that. Press the button until wire feeds out the end. Thread the contact tip on. Reinstall it and you're ready to weld. So I started off with a little bead on plate right here just to uh, get a feel for how it runs and dial in the settings a little bit. And uh, Overall, I was pretty impressed right out of the gate. So clean the slag off there with my chipping hammer a little bit and uh, thought, well, that's not too bad. Go ahead and tack up a key joint. So I'm going to run this fillet weld here and uh, while I'm welding, I'll just kind of introduce myself and my channel. My name's Tim, my channel's Ultimate Makerspace, and I uh, like to work on uh, metalwork, welding, obviously, CNC, electronics, dabble in wood a little bit, so if you're interested in some tips, tricks, tools, and projects uh, that you can use in your own uh, workshop, whatever your makerspace may be, uh, it'd be awesome if you'd subscribe below to my channel. So as I'm running along, uh, it seems to be going pretty well. Made it all the way across the, the coupon a couple of times uh, without any hiccups. And, um, you know, a little bit of spatter, which is to be expected. Uh, but uh, nothing nearly as bad as the uh, other flux core that I'd run. Um, their old, uh, old version that runs on AC. So... Make it to the end here and I'll clean that slag off and see how we did. So get the slag cleaned off and uh, overall not too bad of a result for a first try at it. There's a little bit of undercut there and that's uh, mostly due to my technique. I was traveling a little bit too slow or uh, too fast. I needed to travel a little bit slower um, to fix that. So I went ahead and flipped it over and ran the other side and uh, was able to remedy the undercut there and uh, got a nicer bead welding around the camera. I got a little squirrely at the end there, but uh, overall uh, a much better result. So um, I feel like it, uh, it definitely can weld. So the Titanium Flux 125. I've tried it out and I think it welds pretty good. I uh, welded across a full six inch coupon. It never cut out. Um, the quality of the arc was pretty smooth, and uh, so overall, I think it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good machine. For me, welding is a major part of my craft, and so I like to have a higher-end machine around the shop. 
but I know that everybody's not like that. And so if you're looking to have something for occasional use, you wanna build shelving, railing and gate, uh, go-kart frame, barbecue, those types of uh, projects around the house, it's a perfect fit. Um, it definitely fills a place in the market without breaking the bank. So uh, I'd recommend it for that. Hey, stick around, because I'm gonna show you my four tips uh, that you need to know to get started welding right away. Okay, I'm gonna share with you my four tips that'll get you welding right away. So before the weld, before any of this, you need to make sure your joint fits right, you need to make sure it's clean, you need to make sure your ground clamp's connected. All those things need to happen up front. But what I'm talking about today is at game time. What do you need to pay attention to uh, as far as technique goes to be successful welding. And I really think there's four things, and this applies with nearly any welding process, the same four things. Um, what you'll do will be a little bit different depending on your process. So the first thing is your settings, right? You need to get your knobs turned to the right spot. You need the right wire speed and voltage if you're running a MIG or flux core. And there's a chart inside that'll help you get started. But this is just the starting point. So you'll need to start here and uh, tweak a little from there. So that's why it's good to run a couple of practice beads on a, a coupon and make sure everything is running right up front. Number two, your angle, okay? Angles are really important. So if you're welding flat on a butt weld, you come straight in, tip it about 15 degrees in flux core in the direction that you'll drag it along. Okay, so you're pointing backwards. Okay, if you're on a T-joint, you'll go 45 degrees into the T-joint there, and then once you're there, you still set it and drag it along. Angle is super important. Third, stick out. You want half an inch of wire sticking out of the nozzle all the time. So you need to keep your distance the same, and this is one of the toughest things when I've taught people to weld uh, for them to get a handle on because you'll tend to want to go in and out and, and move around. You've got to make sure that your torch, get it there, you set your angle, get your stick out right, and then you need to keep that consistent and move along. Fourth thing, movement. This has a couple of parts to it. One, consistent speed. You want to move along at a steady rate, and that's gonna depend on you know what size material you're welding, how big your bead is, but you want to move on along steadily. Two, I like to manipulate the torch a little bit. Um, so I'll do some little curly Q circles uh, to be able to, you know, reach the end of the puddle and fill it in. And uh, also it helps me keep a good pace. So if you work on these four things, you get your settings, your angle, your stick out, and your movement right, you'll be welding like a pro in no time.